In this version, I'm going to create an object-oriented version of my recipe calculator from the last lab. And I'm going to start by just reviewing what I have from the previous lab. So um, I have some general purpose functions for getting input. They don't really belong in a class unless I created an input class or something like that. But, um, but I'm just going to leave these as regular modules. And then I have some stuff that deals with ingredients and recipes. And so I'm going to have a class for ingredient, and then it's going to have subclass for non-alcoholic ingredient and a subclass for alcoholic ingredient. And then I'm going to have a recipe class as well. So a recipe contains ingredients, and recipe will have totals and things like that. And ingredient will have name, volume, and proof. And uh, so the totals for the recipe are the total volume and total volume of alcohol. And to display the recipe, I will have the recipe object have a display method. And then my main program, instead of having separate arrays for names, volumes, and proofs, I'm just going to have a recipe object. And then the recipe object is going to have an array of ingredients and then each ingredient is going to have a name, a volume, and a proof. So let's get started with the uh, ingredient class and recipe class and work from there. Um, to make this a little easier, let me just start by implementing an ingredient class and using that instead of having three separate arrays. And then we'll work from there. So let me define a class called ingredient and it's going to have a private string name private real volume private real proof And then I'm also going to have an input method on here, but we'll get to that a little later. So let me just start with the Python code for this. Okay, and we'll come back to there. So now, in the first step, instead of having three separate arrays, I'm just going to have one array. It'll be an array of ingredients. So let me get rid of these three things. And instead, I'm going to declare ingredient, ingredients, uh, max ingredients. Okay, so there's my array. And now in my code, I'm going to have ingredients equals, and then I'll start with none, so all the values will be initialized to nothing. And I'll have just one array of ingredients instead of three separate arrays. And then I'll pass that in here. And I'll pass that in here as well. And I'll pass that in here. Okay, so now I have to, so let me start with my get ingredients method here. So now get ingredients is only going to take one array. And I'll, I'll follow the books convention here. So I've been doing it the other way, but the book likes this way, so let me do that. Um, so most of this is going to be the same. To start with, I'm going to pull this code out. 
and I'm going to move it into a method of my class. So let me go up here. So let's make a public module input. Paste in that code and end module. And then here, instead of setting name sub counter, I'm just going to set the name property. And here I'll set the volume property. And here I'll set the proof property. And then here I'm going to access the name property. And here too. Okay, so there's an input method. Let's go ahead and in my class. So let me go back to my code. Okay. So what I want to do here is I want to create an ingredient input the values. And then I'm going to do the same thing in my code here. So let me move this up. will set self dot under name self dot under volume and self dot under proof and this will refer to self dot under name and self dot under name So here I'm going to set ingredient equal to ingredient. Then I'm going to call ingredient dot input. And then I have to store the ingredient into my array of ingredients. So ingredients subcounter equal to ingredients. Now, uh, I think I actually have enough to test at this point. Um, this should loop through and ask me for a series of ingredients until I say no. And then I should get an array coming back along with the counter. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and test this. Right after here, I'm going to print number of ingredients and also print my ingredients array. Make sure I actually got values in there. So let's go ahead and try this. So, yeah, okay, so I got uh, two ingredients coming back, and then uh, an array, the first two objects, not particularly easy to read, so I'll have to do a little more for testing. But I think this is working so far. So let's go ahead and move along. Check the pseudocode. 
So now, instead of calling get ingredients with uh, these three arrays, I'm going to be passing in ingredients. And then let me skip the total calculation for now. I'll come back to it. And then display recipe number of ingredients, ingredients. So number of ingredients and then ingredients. And then the total volume and total alcohol will just still be zero because I haven't changed them. So let's change that. So this is going to take ingredients now. And we'll change that up here as well. And this is going to be ingredient, ingredients, square. So I need to get the volume property here of each ingredient. So let's do it this way. So let's set ingredient equal to ingredients sub counter. And then here we can access the volume. And I've made those private, so I'm going to want to do like so. And then here I'm going to want the same thing. So let me go ahead and copy that. And here I'm going to want to get the name. And here I'm going to want to get the proof. And then this all looks good. So let's go ahead and make those changes to the code. Um, first thing I want to do though is I want to define these methods. So I need get volume, get name, and get proof in my ingredient class. So this is a function because it's returning a string. Same thing for get volume, except this one's returning a real. And finally, proof. implement those. And that's it for that one. can use those down here.
so. And then this one's name. And this one's proof. Okay, so that should be everything for testing this. Um, we might get a problem here because total volume is uh, zero. And so we'll get a divide by zero error. So let me, uh, let me patch that for a second. Total volume is equal to one, just so that we get some sort of result there. And let's go ahead and run it. So ingredient one, this is a ridiculous percentage, but it's actually working. So let's go ahead and get rid of those statements we put in earlier to print these two things. And let's try it one more time. So 100 milliliters of scotch at 50 proof and 200 milliliters of water at zero proof. So that's starting to look good. Um, now let's go ahead and fix this bit of code. So total volume and total volume of alcohol. This is going to pass in ingredients. And then we'll, I think we already did that, we did. So let's go to calculate totals, ingredients, and we'll do the same thing we did before. And then here we'll set ingredient equal to ingredient sub counter and then we'll call ingredient get volume and we'll do that here as well and then here we'll call ingredient dot get proof Uh, I think that should be it. So let's make that change here as well. Okay, let's get rid of this line that we put in for debugging, and we'll try it. Okay, so two-thirds of the total is 100 milliliters of scotch at 100 proof. One third is 50 milliliters of water at, a, at zero, so that's correct. And then 100 proof is 50%, 50% of 100, so we should end up with 50 milliliters of alcohol, total alcohol 50, total volume is 150, and total alcohol percent is one third, so 50 over 150. So it looks like we're working, everything is working. So now let's make a change. Instead of just having ingredients, let's also have non-alcoholic ingredients. So I'm gonna create a child class, a subclass of ingredient called non-alcoholic ingredient. And it's going to extend ingredient 
and it's going to be the same as an ingredient in every way except I'm not going to ask the user to input proof so let me uh, start the code here I think everything else is the same. Get rid of the proof here. So let me go ahead and copy this module. Now I don't have to worry about the proof because it defaults to zero. So I think that as long as I don't change that value, everything else should work correctly. Now let's go ahead and in our get ingredients, first thing we're going to do is ask the user whether the ingredient is alcoholic or not. And if it is, then we'll create an alcoholic ingredient instead of an ingredient. So let's do that in pseudocode. So I'm going to create a variable a lot of stuff in that one. Um, this is an exact match for the Python. Okay. If is alcoholic, else ingredient is equal to non-alcoholic ingredients. So that should just work now. Yes, scotch 100, 100, no, no, water 50. Good, so it didn't ask me for the proof. And now I'm done and I get the same results back so everything's working correctly now I could change the output method here too so that it doesn't output proof for non-alcoholic ingredients but I'm just going to leave that in and then the last thing I want to do is instead of having uh, ingredients and uh, having all these loose variables I want to create a class for a recipe and have the count of ingredients and the ingredient array and the totals all be in that recipe class. So let's go ahead and do that up here. That's the first one. So 
so recipe is going to have a private integer for number of ingredients and it's going to have a private array of ingredients called under ingredients and that's going to be up to max ingredients and uh, let's go ahead and add total volume and total alcohol let me look again actually total volume alcohol okay and uh, let's go ahead and get started with the class enough to get started I think so now instead of returning number of ingredients and get ingredients and so on we can make get ingredients be a method of our recipe so let's create a recipe and we'll start by setting the recipe equal to a new recipe let's do that in our pseudocode and then instead of calling get ingredients there we'll say recipe.get ingredients like so so let's work on get ingredients We'll come back here as well. So let me come to, come with this out for now. So now this whole thing is going to become a method. So I'm going to cut all that stuff out and then go to my recipe class and I'm going to have to move some stuff around, but. This is going to go inside the class. And then I want to tab this over. Good. So now this is a method of the class almost. And then I want to tab all these lines over too. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to select this whole block of comments and control slash to uncomment and then tab to tab over and then control slash again to recomment. That's better. And then this is going to be private and it can just be a module now because it doesn't need to return any values. 
and then it doesn't take any arguments anymore and uh, I forgot a line before I need to actually add this to the array um, now, before I would have just added it to the ingredients array that was being passed in, but here what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to my private ingredients array. And then everywhere where I was using counter before, I'm just going to go ahead and use my number of ingredients instead. And uh, I think that should be it. So let's go ahead and do that here. So since this is a method now, it's got to take self, and it doesn't take ingredients anymore because that's now a property, and I uh, don't need counter. So this part's all good. Here I'm going to set under ingredients dot self dot under number of ingredients should be self close ingredient and then I'm going to set self dot number of ingredients to self dot number of ingredients plus one and then I don't need to return counter anymore make sure the pseudocode doesn't do that I think that's it. Let's go ahead and see what happens. I'll go ahead and just print the recipe. That will probably cause an error, but that's okay. recipe object but we can't look inside of it yet. Um, so let's go ahead and hook up the output module to work. So now I don't need number of ingredients anymore and I don't need ingredients and then these are all going to be properties in my recipe and so I'm just gonna have a display method Let's go ahead and look at our display method. So this code here, that's going to be part of our recipe class. And then I need to copy the comments to my pseudocode as well. So let me uncomment this and tab it over and recomment it. Whoops. That worked. Okay. Doesn't quite line up though. Maybe it's just the first line. 
Yeah, the rest of it looks good. Okay, so now I'm commented over. And this actually should have been a public module, because I'm calling it from outside of the method, or outside of the class. And this will be public as well. Called display. And it's not going to take any parameters. And then these are all, oh, I need counter still, but, and need that, need that. This I don't need, because it's a property now. And, uh, oh, actually I do, sorry. Ingredients is a property now. So this is under ingredients. And then this is also a property. Total volume is a property. The rest of that looks good. Total volume alcohol is a property. Total volume is a property. That's a property. That's a property. And then this is just a local variable. So I think that's everything. Let me go ahead and start working on the code. So uh, that's tabbed over correctly. So it's just going to be recipe. And it's just going to take self. under number of ingredients and same here same here it's a lot easier for the code because it's highlighted that might actually be it now we're still gonna we're gonna get a divide by zero here so let's go ahead and set self dot total volume alcohol equal to 1 so we don't get a divide by 0 but I think this will work let's go ahead and test it Recipe object has no attribute display. So let me go ahead and take a look again. Oh, oops. Editing error. There we go. All right, so 150 milliliters. We set that to one. Um, so it looks like it's working so far. Let's go ahead and do the last module. And then this one, calculate totals. I'm going to do recipe.calculate. And I already have those things. So get ingredients, calculate, and display. Get ingredients. Calculate. And display. And this should all be, this should be a set. And this should be call. Call and call. And 
And then I missed some sets here. So set, 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 set. But this is all going to be part of my class definition for recipe. So uncomment, tab, and recomment. So this doesn't need to return anything anymore, so it can just be a module. Doesn't need any parameters. These are both properties. This is now private. So nope, that's just the local variable. Never mind. That's this thing right here. counter is just a local variable. And then I don't need to return these anymore because I'm storing them as properties. And I think that's it. So my methods are a little, little out of order here, but oh, get ingredients, display, and now I need Calculate totals. Tab that over. So this is just going to take self. to go away. And uh, where does it see this total volume? It should be under total volume. Not sure why I'm not getting a highlight under there, but oh, now I am. that return anymore. Okay, so that's going to update the properties on my recipe object. So I think everything's right. Let's go ahead and try it. Oh, and I forgot to uh, get rid of that line that set total volume to one in my display. So get rid of that. Now let's see. So, 50 milliliters of scotch, 25 milliliters of water, I'm sorry, 50%, 25%, 25%, 100, 50, 50%, that's correct. And then scotch is one half of the total at 100 proof, which is 50%, so it should be 25% is total alcohol. Good. So everything looks like it's working correctly. Um, our program now uses a class for the recipe and class for the ingredient, and also a subclass for non-alcoholic ingredients. Do a quick check through the pseudocode, make sure I didn't miss anything else. I did. Set. 
set. Missed a lot of sets all over the place. Okay. That should be capital R there. Um, I have some extra variables here. Let's get rid of those. So actually the only variable I'm using anymore is this recipe. So everything else goes away. And uh, I think I missed one more thing. Oh, there's a stray S there. So everything else looks good. Um, I look forward to seeing your lab.